Okay, everybody, welcome. Uh, so this is Pio for Endurance Athletes. My name's Ryan Chapman. I'm a five-star diamond elite team beach body coach and a member of the test group uh, that they just finished for Pio about two weeks ago. So I've been through the whole program, and I'm also an endurance athlete and triathlon coach, certified level one uh, USAT triathlon coach, certified run coach, and so I've been in the endurance uh, world for uh, quite a few years now helping athletes get results in triathlons too. So I'm going to talk to you today about how we are going to combine those things. But I also have with me another elite coach, Ashley Mahaffey. So Ashley, say hi to everybody. Hey everybody. Yeah, thanks for, I'm really excited that you guys showed up and that some of you are listening to the recording later. But a little bit about me, uh, I have been also an endurance athlete, done a couple of Ironman races, coached a couple of uh, endurance athletes, and my background is in personal training. And also I ha come from an extensive college sports athletic background. So I've worked with college athletes as one and coaching them and for 15 years and Division One All-Americans and U.S. players. So. I feel like this is going to be a great topic. We're really excited about the content that we're going to be bringing to you tonight, and, and, I, and I know that some of you have asked some amazing questions, so let's get rolling. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I, thanks for that, and you know, I've been using a lot of different programs for helping triathletes and, and endurance athletes and stuff uh, get better results. Uh, mine started with P90X back in the day. I, I did some P90X, and I found that some of the strength I was getting from that was helping me in my endurance uh, in my endurance endeavors, so I started integrating P90X, and and it worked pretty well. Um, the one problem with P90X that I found was that the workouts are an hour long, and a lot of triathletes just you just have a hard time fitting in an hour of strength training, you know, a couple of times a week, three times a week, and and they are also very focused on particular muscle groups. So you spend an entire hour on chest and back, which triathletes don't necessarily need to do but there's also a lot of helpful stuff there and we moved on to P90X2 and I started using that and we moved on to P90X3 only 30 minute workouts which was much better I've got some amazing stuff from P90X3 uh, that I've done with some athletes where you can really integrate that stuff really well and then the program PIO came out or hasn't come out yet actually it's not coming out until Monday as we're filming this uh, so about six days from now but for those of you that don't know what PIO is, I'll just give you a little background on PIO just so you know what that is before we get into how it really affects endurance athletes. So PIO is a new DVD-based program that is coming out from Beachbody, which are the makers of P90X and Insanity and T25 and a lot of those things that you've heard of. Uh, Ashley and I are both coaches with Beachbody, so we work with people on those programs. And PIO is the new one that's coming out. PIO as a program is not actually... Uh, a new idea. It's been around for quite a while in gyms as a gym, uh, a group exercise class. So you could take a PIO strength class in, in a gym around the country and see what this is about. It's kind of a Pilates yoga fusion class, but there's other stuff. And, and I think Ashley would probably say the same thing, that it's not just Pilates and yoga, right? I mean, there's more stuff in there. You're, you're going to do some uh, some things that get your cardio up, get your heart rate up, and you're going to move fast, and it's not just Pilates and yoga, but it, it's very inspired by Pilates and yoga. So Ashley and I went through the test group, did 60 days or eight weeks of PIO, and the results from it were absolutely amazing. I lost 13 pounds. I'm not sure how much, Ashley, how much did you lose? I, I lost four uh, pounds, and, uh, you know, I, I'm at my Ironman weight. I think that the thing is I lost 9.25 inches overall, but no. I'll get into my results because that my goal wasn't to lose weight. It was body composition a little bit, but uh, really I had yeah. some issues that I needed to take care of with basically pain and injury. Right, exactly. And that's, that's some of the stuff we're going to get into because, um, you know, what I've noticed with athletes that I've worked with is that you have so much swimming, biking, and running to do in a triathlon schedule or so much running to do in a running schedule that the things that get left out are two things. One is strength training. Um, most athletes are better about that than the second thing. The second thing is stretching and flexibility. And a lot of athletes are very bad about stretching, right? They just don't fit that in. If I give an athlete a 45 minute run or a four and a half mile run or a five mile run or something like that, 
in their schedule they will make just enough time to do that 45 minute run and they don't they don't add in time for stretching uh, warm up anything like that right so what you end up with is a lot of a lot of runners who have weak hips weak glutes weak cores and they have uh, poor hip flexor mobility poor uh, you know poor flexibility in general and it affects their running and you see injuries you see um, lower speed than they could have. You see all kinds of stuff. So we're going to talk about those things one by one and how PIO is something that could be integrated into your endurance plan and help you take care of those things in a fun way and a way that actually saves you time too. So the first thing I want to talk about, and we'll just kind of throw this back and forth between me and Ashley, and I'll give my thoughts on it and then throw it over to her, or maybe I'll start with her sometimes so that I'm not always going first. And uh, we'll talk about each of these points. The first one I want to talk about is the ability to get stretching and flexibility within a workout that you're actually getting strength from and, you know, core work and all kinds of other stuff. So you're strengthening your hips, glutes, core, uh, you know, chest, getting strength work, but at the same time getting flexibility rather than flexibility and stretching being something that comes after the fact. And I think that's one of my number one things about Pio that I think is amazing. So what are your thoughts on that, Ashley? I mean, you, you experience that. So what do you think? Yeah, I, 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 this, this is my number one goal coming into Pio because they ask you, you know, the test group, what do you want to get out of this? And I said, my, I want to improve my posture, but mostly I want to become pain-free. And I was walking around probably for like the last six months, I have not been able to do a, a run. I, I feel it in my medial glute, a little bit of my piriformis. I don't, I've been a physical therapist, and I have some exercises that do work, but I just needed the stretching and strengthening, the, the whole combination of what Pio offers. And um, I wasn't sure that this was going to give me the result that I was wanting, but that was really it. I, I, would feel, I would say that on every day I was in chronic pain. It was probably about, it was probably about a two or a three, uh, and... Um, it was from tight hamstrings, tight hip flexors, and just general lack of, you know, I have no, no core strength compared to what I do have now. But I just want to also tell you that when we, you know, some other things that I wanted, my, my traps and my rhomboids were, and even in the thoracic area, you know, the mid-back, I was always feeling kind of fatigued and sore and as if I just wanted somebody to pull me back. And uh, I know it's from leaning over in the arrow bars, for, you know, for, for a long time, but recently it's just typing and driving and leaning over the, the sink for the few minutes that I do dishes. But I, I felt I, the Pio corrected all of that stuff. And um, I, I can't, there were so many things that I couldn't do. Yeah, I know you guys know what um, potentially what a V up is, and it's, it's like your head is here and then your feet are here and you're balancing on your, you know, like your tailbone basically. I could never, without bending my knees, you know, crunching them in, do that. And I just didn't have the hamstring, fl hamstring flexibility or the core strength. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I might have gone off on a little rabbit hole there, but that's... <laughs> no, no, that's fine. That's fine. Now that everybody's sitting up straighter listening to this, uh, mm -hmm. listening to this uh, webinar. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so my posture, I, I would be sitting and or even just walking around the house and I could be sitting at my computer just like looking at reading a document and I could feel that my traps and my rhomboids re were really just fatigued and, and I don't feel that way anymore and I can tell because I took that profile we both all took these before profile photos and I can tell I marked the tape on the ground and I marked exactly where I was going to take the camera so I knew the before and after they were going to be the, the same angle and you can tell that my posture you know, I'm more erect and I, I feel um, right. feel better. That's awesome. So, um, you know, the what I started this this point, this particular area about is, you know, how you get this within a workout rather than after. Because right, you because you could do stretches for doing what you're talking about um, if you wanted to, right? And you could also do, uh, you know, hamstring stretches, and you know, you could sit on the ground and do hamstring stretches, or you could stand and, and do split stretches or whatever you wanted to do to get all that stuff done, but you would not be getting strength work at the same time, right? And right. so this is, this is such a huge time savings, and it will, I think it will actually make athletes actually do their strength and flexibility training instead of skipping it. 
Absolutely, Ryan. I agree 100% because I know, I mean, I told my athletes, you need to stretch, and I would never do it. I would never do it unless I went to maybe a stretching and strengthening class a couple of years ago. I did yoga. Didn't like it for various, I mean, I liked it. I liked the effects. I just didn't like doing it. Right. This is shorter. It's a substantially shorter. The mu music is way better, in my opinion. I mm -hmm. feel like I'm energized, and the stretching and the strengthening happens in that workout. Um, absolutely, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, so so for your athletes out there, imagine um, enjoying getting your strength work in and becoming more flexible while you're getting stronger because a lot of you I know like doing some strength work because you like to get stronger, but very few of you enjoy the stretching part. But if you could get strong and flexible at the same time in the same workout, that's going to save you time and allow you to get your swim spikes and runs in and get strong and flexible at the same time. And I think that that is super helpful. We're talking about 20-minute workouts that you could do after a run to help stretch you out and increase some strength in there. We're talking 20-minute, 30-minute workouts, mm -hmm. stuff that's not going to overload your schedule, and you're going to get all that flexibility and strength in there. Now let's, let's talk about, though, why flexibility is so important We've talked about it a little bit because we've talked about injuries, right? So I think we've mostly covered the injury side of why flexibility is important. We can talk about that a little bit more if you want. But the other thing that flexibility increases that people do not realize, a lot of endurance athletes don't realize, is flexibility increases speed. And so you've got a lot of people out there who are running uh, slower paces and they train and train and train every year, and they their pace increases very slightly. And they just think, well, you know, I'm 20 pounds overweight, and, you know, that's why I only run an 11-minute mile in my half marathons or whatever. And uh, it doesn't seem to matter how much I train. I can't break 11-minute miles in my marathon or my half marathon. And what I've found with people is, let's well, let's look at the at what makes up speed in running, right? There's two things that you can change in order for speed to increase in running. You can either move your feet faster, right, which there's obviously a limit on that, right? How fast can you move your feet? Uh, we've mostly found that 180 steps per minute is pretty efficient for most people. Somewhere in that range, 170 to 190 is pretty efficient for most distance runners. Uh, you could go up to 200, 210. You're going to get tired real quick. It's not efficient. But that's one way to increase speed. The other way to increase speed is to cover more ground in each step. And that means that your stride length increases. Those are the only two factors that you can change to increase speed physically, right? You can lose weight, but what happens when you lose weight is you either move your feet faster or you increase your stride length, right? And it's just easier to do so because you have less weight to take, right? So one of those two things increases. The limiter for most people is stride length. Because, like I said, you can, there's, there's already a limit on how fast you can move your feet. But when you open up your stride length more, you can cover more ground in each stride. However, if you have really tight hip flexors, guess what you can't do? You can't open up your stride. So, you know, if we could do this, I don't know if I can do this standing. Let me try to stand up and, and, and show this. I'll see if it'll actually work. So... Ashley, you can tell me if you can actually see me here. But if I get back, I'll bring the computer down. Yeah. A little. yeah. Okay, so if I, if I actually try to get out here in a lunge, this is my hip flexor right here, right? And I'm opening up my stride as much as I can. If, if you were to do this with me right now, those of you who are watching, if you stand up straight, you'll feel that hip flexor right there on the front of your hip. If you lean forward, you'll feel it release. Right? If you pull up, you'll feel it stretch. Right? If you have really tight hip flexors, it's going to limit the amount that you can open up this stride. And so what a lot of people do is when they really try to start running hard, they'll lean forward because they can open up their stride more that way because it releases the hip flexor. The problem is, is that then you don't get the spring that comes from the hip flexor when it releases because you've released the tension on the hip flexor. So I don't know if that's making sense or if I'm just all, you know, uh, throwing a bunch of kind of uh, run yeah, code stuff, stuff out there at you. But you need hip flexor flexibility in order to be fast. You've got to have that. And Pio 
gives you that. So what, what are your thoughts uh, more on, on the speed area? Um, well, I can just say that, uh, you know, I think we talked about this. This might, this might be a little bit more talking about the, the endurance. And, um, but, as, as, I mean, I don't think that I'm going to add anything regarding that. I mean, that's brilliant. You know, I haven't really been testing any speed except for I had a couple of, I, I just did some an endurance race on d day 60. So when we get to that, I'll talk, talk about the, you know, DOMS and that kind of stuff. Okay, cool. Um, so another thing uh, is comfort, right, that has to do with flexibility. You know, we've got a lot of athletes on here who ride in aero bars, right? If you're, if you're a triathlete and you're doing half Ironmans and Ironmans especially, you've probably got aero bars. If you're doing sprints, maybe not. Um, or if you're newer to triathlon, maybe not. But if anybody's ever spent 56 miles in aero bars on a flat course, um, mm -hmm. you know that if you're not flexible and have core strength, but flexibility is a big part of it, if you're not flexible, you get off that bike and you run like you're still in the aero position for about the first two or three mm -hmm. miles, right? You're kind of bent over and you're like, ah, oh, and you're trying to like release that back. I tell you, when I went on bike rides after I had been doing Pio for four to six weeks, I went on 40-mile bike rides and got off the bike, like, fine. Mm -hmm. Like, my core strength and my flexibility had increased so much that I didn't have that stiffness. And I know a lot of you know the stiffness that I'm talking about when you get off those aero bars, right? You've had that in your Ironmans and stuff, Ashley? Oh, yeah, every single one of them. I mean, it takes me a while to get going, for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you get off that, get off those aero bars, you're kind of like, I, I picture myself running like I'm still in aero bar position, you know, because I Actually, feel like that. I have a photo, you know, when you have the photographer take your photo when you're coming right out of the, um, you know, the, the tent. Air. And yeah, and I and I am, I mean, I, I have them, and I'm just thinking back. I'm always leaning over, you know. Yeah. So always, always, just always. because you're just. Your back is not mm -hmm. flexible enough to handle that for that long, so it's it's fatigued from doing that, from being mm -hmm. down in that position. So I didn't have that after Pio, so that's a huge thing. So there's a couple of reasons why flexibility is important: speed, comfort, uh, and then injury prevention. Mm -hmm. I think we've talked about that, but if you have anything else to add, mm -hmm. Ashley, on injury prevention with flexibility, you know, feel free. I'm not going to add about inju injury prevention because I mean that's just obvious, but. I would think, but I think the thing is that if you have injury, um, you know that that's tissue based. This is a, an excellent, excellent program to supplement what you're already doing. And I, I agree that you can slip it in right after your workout. And uh -huh. I would say, because of the defin, I did not think at all that I would really get any definition or um, or gains, because I just didn't think that I my body weight would really be able to give me the gains that I that I got but it, it did I saw my, my my quads I have definition in them um, so I think that if I was doing another training for another Ironman I would just ditch my my weight routine right now because it was hard enough for me and I wouldn't spend another after my I used to go on Tuesday nights and hit the gym after that I just don't think that I would do it yeah I do pio I mean yeah. that's what I'm gonna do for I'm, I'm gonna do Miami 70.3 in October and mm -hmm. that's all I'm doing is Pio and my swim, bike, and run. So we'll see how it goes. I but I, I, I have really, high, high hopes for it because I think it's awesome. I want to get back on the in, in, in the aero bars because I haven't been back in since mm. um, I, since I and I actually went running. I went running on uh, so what is it, sixty days? Yeah, sixty day program, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I went running probably about six weeks into it, and I would do three miles. I had no problem, and I really thought I was thinking, when's it going to come on? When am it? When is that right side of my lower back and that gl medial glute or my piriformis area? When is that going to start kind of it giving me a little problem? And it it never did. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm I'm super excited for people to get this in their hands that have had injury and are just kind of you still training through it, you know, still training through it. You don't have to train through it. This will really help you, balance you out, give you the core strength and flexibility to be able to feel free and relax and pain-free. I Absolutely. Well, let's talk about core strength because you mentioned that, you know, we've talked a little bit about it already, but um, one of the things I have written down about core strength is that's one of the keys to stamina. Mm -hmm. It's one of the keys to endurance, right? If you don't have a strong core, um, you know, you think about, I always do a drill with my runners um, where I just have them stand like they're having a conversation and, you know, just 
not in good posture, not with their core engaged or anything like that. And I come over and I grab both of their shoulders and I just push down. And you can see, like, because everything's out of alignment, you can see things just move all the way down the chain, you know. And then I say, okay, now stand up in good posture, engage your core, you know, stand up so everything's aligned, so, you know, uh, ear to shoulder to hip to knee to ankle, and then I go push down on them and it's solid as a rock, you know. I mean, there's just no way to move it just by pushing down on the shoulders. And it's a good example of how, you know, when you're running or when you're biking, if your core's engaged, it holds everything together, you know, so that other muscles don't have to try to um, mm -hmm. hold things up while you're also trying to move forward, you know. Yeah, that helps with, that also helps, you know, when you have that, that strong core, then it helps with the fatigue factor, you know, especially if you're an endurance athlete, you just want to have that strong core so you're not relying on everything else to do all the work mm -hmm. on the bike for, specifically. Exactly. And the rotation that you're going to get and the, the torque that you'll get in the water, you know, just from that strong core. Yes, the swimming, I mean, having a strong core in swimming is huge. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely huge. It's also important on the bike for holding your your positions on the bike without, you know, it's, I don't know how many of you have ever had on a road bike where your hands right here go numb because you've got all your weight on your hands. When you have a strong core, your core can help hold you up so you don't have to put all your weight on your hands. And, then, and, and it makes a big difference, right? It makes an even bigger difference when you get off the bike and you start running and you've got that marathon because then your upper body is more relaxed and you've saved it a little bit more fresh. The other thing that I want to say about Pio in regards to um, team sports, and I, I mean, I think it's great for even just like tennis and golf, uh, for sure, for sure mm -hmm. golf, because there's some... So and there's so many multiple planes of motion that you're doing in this that it's great. You're not just moving in this, you know, one range of mo one plane of motion, when, like when you're running mm -hmm. or when you're cycling. Um, it's going to help athletes across the board that really have to work on agility and change of direction and balance um, for sure. So I would say any athlete should be take, getting this in their hands. I was thinking about I used to coach all these college athletes, and so many times you want to be able to have the core strength to be solid enough to make quick cuts and um, you know obviously you have to work on the footwork and the speed but if you're more flexible and you have that strong core you're going to be able to do that faster mm -hmm. and uh, the other thing that I wanted to say was when you ha I had I could definitely notice the definition in my core for sure but I got on the I did a mountain bike ra race and I told Ryan this last week when we were talking about this this webinar that we were going to do here and I told him I said day 60 I actually went in to get my mountain bike tuned up and I had just gotten the the bike probably about 4 months ago and I've I bought it used don't really know what I'm doing on the mountain bike but I like it it's fun and the guy at the store said, hey, we're having a mountain bike race up here in Big Bear, California. Why don't you do it tomorrow? I'm like, I don't even know the rules of mountain bike rating, ra racing. He's like, oh, it's just a slug fest. Don't worry. Just get out there. I'm like, oh, cool. And I said, he said, get out there and just tell them that you're on our team. So, and I'm like, so I did. I signed up, and I didn't know what I was doing, but I've ridden the course a little bit. I got out there, and um, I rode hard. And it was elevation. I'm at sea level. I rode it. It was about 7,800 feet where I was riding, and I had no problem. I finished second, and in my age group, and um, there were more than two people in the race. And <laughs> um, and the, the coolest thing was, I was able to navigate stuff that my. I told my husband, I go, I went down pirates. He's like, you went down pirates on your bike or walked down? I said, no, I went down. He goes. I walk my mountain bike down that. I'm like, you're kidding me. I, go, I can see why, but I just thought that everybody was supposed to ride down, so I did. He's like, how did you navigate? I, I go, honestly, it was a lot of prayer, but I was, I felt like so in control, and I know it was because of my core was able to, to, you know, put the wheel in the right spot. The other thing that I want to say is that um, I didn't have any soreness, delayed onset muscle soreness after that race, after two and a half hours, and I had no problem completing it, and I didn't feel like my legs were glue or rubber after that at all. 
And I don't know why, because I hadn't been doing any endurance. The longest workout was 45 minutes. And I think we only did that one like five times in the whole eight weeks. It's called right. Drench. And um, it's great. I love Drench. It is. Uh, the, uh, drench is great. You know, I did a 42 and a half mile bike ride with my wife, I think five weeks, four or five weeks into Pio. And I had not touched my bike in since basically the beginning of the year. And the longest ride I did in 2013 was 20 miles. Wow. And I did, I did a 42 and a half mile ride. I didn't do much triathlon in 2013. Mm -hmm. I did an Ironman in 2012. Mm -hmm. But uh, I basically had not ridden over 20 miles in over a year. And I did a 42 and a half mile ride and felt amazing. In fact, my mm -hmm. wife got mad at me because I was whistling so on the hills. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing because she's lighter than you. And, you're, and you know, sh you, you should, she should be... <laughs> she was like... That. You were just a little too chipper on the hard parts. That's what she told me. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I love that. Yeah. Well, so let's talk about, um, we talked about core strength. We talked about flexibility. Uh, talked about getting the stretching in the workouts. Um, we've talked mostly about core strength and flexibility, and I think a lot of people are thinking, well, I thought you said there was more in this than yoga and Pilates, so what else am I going to get out of this? So, Let's talk leg strength and upper body strength. Do they get anything out of Pio in that sense? Absolutely. I mean, there, there are a lot of um, descending tricep push-ups, a lot of tricep push-ups, which I like because we, you know, it's great for the, the pull, uh, you know, when, when, you, in this, when you're swimming. And um, it's great when you're just, I think, I mean, I, I want stronger triceps for my swim. And the other thing that the legs, absolutely. I mean, that one workout called buns, you know, you're doing a lot of dynamic strength and stretching, stretching movements. And I, I thought that was, a, that was a great workout. And a lot of balance work. You know what? So just imagine, you guys, I just did a sweat yesterday. And you're doing, a, you're doing multiple planes of motion again. So you'll do like a reverse lunge, and you'll stand up, and then you'll stay balanced. And then you'll lift your knee up high and kind of a, um, in the front. And then you'll bring it back down, and then you'll shift over to, the, to a lateral lunge. So I like the multiple planes of motion for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I totally the, agree. The other thing, buns, good. Uh, so buns, right? That you know, I love the name of that workout, but um, amazing, amazing leg workout, and you never touch a weight. And it's the type of workout that the first time you do it, if you overdo it a little bit and don't follow the modifier, you'll have a hard time walking the next day. And we're talking about like 27 minutes, 28 minutes, something like that. And it's, uh, it's amazing. But there's also um, a couple other workouts. One's called Sculpt mm -hmm. and another one's called um, strength, intervals, strength Intervals, which, yeah. you know, you're talking about like some high-intensity interval type stuff, which you would never find in yoga or Pilates. Um, so you're getting uh, a little bit that, – that one's probably the only one that you could consider – moderately high impact if you did the full routine is strength mm -hmm. intervals, right? Am I right on that? Strength intervals? Yeah, I would say that. And then I would also say if you have any kind of like the uh, glute or medial issues, um, mm. I, don't, I don't do, um, so when they have your, your, you're kind of out in a plie lunge where your toes are pointing out and you're supposed to be squatting down, um, plie squat, I, I, I actually just do it half time because I want to make sure that my form is good and I just don't want to hurt anything. And the other thing is when we did those burpees, um, I would modify it. And so I wouldn't go out into the from, from a frog stance and out into a burpee and come back. I would just do regular burpees so that I didn't have any kind of um, external mm -hmm. rotation. Right. Which that's, that's another good point here is we're talking about leg strength and upper body strength. And I will say that my push-ups actually, I got much stronger mm -hmm. in my upper body I never thought that I would get as good at push-ups as I did in a program like this. I never touched a weight, and I, I increased my push-ups a lot. But also, hips. Runners mm -hmm. have weak hips. Like, I, I have a chiropractor buddy. We do running clinics together, and that's the one thing he tells me all the time. They have um, inflexible hip flexors. It's poor hip, poor flexibility and hip flexors. They have poor calf flexibility, and they have weak hips, weak yes. hips, glute, right? Those ab, those that abs can change in this. You guys, I can't tell you. I'm sure that most people that are that that are have had issues 
have got those weak abductors. And you know, that, those are the kind of exercises where your physical therapist or your uh, running coach will have you where you're standing, your feet are like this, and then you're going to have you walking sideways, you know, with like a band in between your legs, or you're on your side, and they're going to have you doing like a scissor kick to strengthen that hip flex, that um, abductor, you know. Mm -hmm. So because we're always moving this way, but we don't have this, we need to make sure that we're going to have full symmetrical strength happening all around that hip joint. Exactly. Um, nobody's going to so do that. Himself. There's so much work on that. I mean, in all the workouts, you get hip work, right? Because you've got side plank work and all kinds of stuff, you know, pio, uh, pio pikes and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You're getting work in those hip joints and everything that is so important for runners. And even the runners who do strength training don't specifically strengthen their hips. I don't see that very often with people. They're doing major muscle groups. They're doing, you know, squats, and they do, which gets the glutes a little bit, but you're missing some of the side, you know, and, and you're going to get that in this program. So leg strength, upper body strength, hip strength, glute strength, we've got all of that covered in here. Um, also, also, um, you know, I really wanted, you know, a little vein. I wanted to have a little bit stronger delts. You know, I wanted my, my deltoids to be a little bit more bulk there <laughs> instead yeah. of just sloping off. And I noticed that I really did. And she does do something that modifies, uh, that mimics a, a shoulder press. And you'd have to just get in there and, and do the workout. But just to let you know that you do work those delts for sure. My well, wish. and you do squatting uh, like the... Um, squatting downward dog push-ups and things mm -hmm. like that and the, all that downward dog work you know really mm. gets on those shoulders and you don't realize it because you're not like actually doing a press or whatever but you get a lot of shoulder work out of this so yeah I actually um, I wanted to show I mean in a second I wanted to show you guys this exercise right here uh, let me get back um, okay let me see if I can screen share I want to show you this exercise here that's going to be so good for, hmm. let's see if it works, stretching here, whoa, um, oh, sorry, I'm flipping over, okay, can you see that now, the pio flip? Yes. Okay, so this is the exercise here that gets your glutes, your abductors, it helps with core strength and you're getting your shoulders. I mean, I think this one exercise here is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and then she gets it where I guess you're going all the way over kind of at some point where you kind of release one, you know, this arm. Um, it's a great hip flexor stretch right there at the top mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yeah. Amazing. That And this one's super hard. You think it looks easy. It's not if your hips are not strong enough. So anyway, I'll make, you can take the screen back. Uh, stop screen share, sorry. There we go. Cool. Well, the only other thing I had written down on here was uh, to talk about balance a little bit because balance is actually, you know, very useful for endurance athletes as well. Um, the first place I think about it really is in the water. You know, um, having balance in the water is, is really important. But working on your balance on land helps you in the water. It also helps you in running and things like that. Um, so what kind of balance work do they get in this program? Any? <laughs> tons, tons. Yeah, I, I mean, I can't remember the names of all of the exercises, but every single workout, you know, you have one that's an 18-minute workout, and then you'll have the, generally they're around 30-minute workouts, but they all have balance work, you know, even just one arm where you're in a plank and you have one arm down and she has you move your, sorry, move your hand forward. Um, mm -hmm. I love that. But her cueing is so good. Shalene Johnson is the woman who, the trainer who put this together. And she's, a, you know, personal trainer. She's put together a lot of amazing programs for people. More around high cardio and um, kind of, I would say more choreographed trip programs. So I've never boxing type stuff and yes. yeah mm -hmm. stuff that's not uh, you know that's not I'm really not great at because I, I need more athletic stuff because I'm just not as good at the choreography kind of stuff. So I was really shocked when I 
got into this and I was like, wow, I can do this. There aren't a lot of moves. I don't have to follow a lot of dancey stuff. And um, the other thing is her cueing, I was saying, is really, really good. So once you get it down, you don't even need to look at the screen. You can just, you know, didn't you feel that way, Ryan, as far as her cueing goes? Oh, my gosh. I, you know, I, I, I put this in some of the interviews that, that we sent in because um, I had not done any Shalene Johnson programs before. I had done like two, two turbo fire workouts, and I was like, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, me neither. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, that's not for me. And, and so I had never really worked out with Shalene on video more than a couple of times at a fit club or something like mm-hmm. that. And, and, you know, Pio didn't really sound that interesting to me. me so when, they, yeah, when they were like, hey, you want to be in the Pio test group? I, I was like, uh, all right. So yeah. it's, like a, it's a good opportunity to get, to get to see a program before it comes out and stuff. It's a good opportunity. I'll take it, you know. And I absolutely fell in love with Shalene Johnson mm-hmm. and her mm-hmm. as a trainer. As a mm-hmm. trainer. <laughs> I mean, she's just amazing on video. She cues so well. Mm-hmm. She makes you feel alive and awesome during your workouts. And I just, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I I just love this program for so many reasons. But that's one of them is that she really brings a lot to the program. <sighs> she is excellent. And I have done, I did her Turbo Jam when it first came out. And I'm just not coordinated. When I say I was kind of bummed that I got asked to do it, it's only because I'm not good at doing that kind of stuff. It's not that I don't like the music or I don't like having fun. It's just that that's not my style of workout. I'm not good at it. And it doesn't motivate me as far as, because if I can't do something, you know. Yes, so absolutely. I can do this. Anybody can do this workout is what why I love it. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. I mean, it it takes it might take just a little bit to get used to some of the stuff, but it only takes about one time through the workout, and the next time you're just like pretty much right on with it because it's it's not super slow like yoga is, mm-hmm. but it's not super fast like kickboxing where there's just move after move after move after move every second and you can't keep up and it's this and that and this and that. It's it's kind of in between that, and so you flow really well and you're not just standing there. But you, it's slow enough that you can pick up all the moves, stay on time, go right with everybody and not miss stuff. And it's just, yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. as, a, as a personal trainer, you know, I really stay focused. And also as a, from a former college coach, you know, you have to speak and you have to call out direction for them to correct what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And, and you have to be good at it for them to be able to make those changes if by only hearing it. And I think she is an unbelievable trainer. Absolutely, hands down, one of the, one of the best I've ever seen on video. And I think that people will be so excited to, that who have never worked out with her to have her. The other thing that she does, which Ryan just said, is you know when you're kind of a ready to get, like, I don't know, I'm kind of not into it today. Mm-hmm. She will get in there and she'll say, look, she'll give you positive. Um, mindset kind of talk. So I like that because, you know, if I'm just like, eh, whatever, she'll be like, I believe in you, you know, you're awesome. And and those kind of things, I find that myself, I'm telling my clients and my, um, the people, my athletes that messaging, but I don't really hear it. So when I hear it, it's like, oh, wow, that's, that's great. And you're hearing mm-hmm. it through a video, but it does make it, it does make a difference. It absolutely does. It absolutely does. Well, so you know, we've talked about Pio, we've talked about flexibility and core strength and all the things that Pio can give the athletes. I know for myself, I'm going to be using this with a lot of my athletes and I'm going to have programs created for all different levels and all kinds of stuff. And I'm sure that Ashley is too and can help any one of you out there to integrate Pio into your endurance plan. Um, if you're not currently training for something, I actually highly recommend going through Pio by itself once to see you know, what Pio is all about. If you're training for something, we can help you integrate Pio into that training plan so that you can use Pio as your strength and flexibility source. And then all you got to do is your normal swim, bike, run stuff. And we can help you add that in there. And I'm sure that Ashley would say that she's absolutely willing to help any of you that want that and want to pick up a copy of Pio and integrate it into your plan. I know a lot of you are getting excited. Uh, Pio is available coming 
uh, if you're coming to Summit and you're a coach, then you'll be able to buy it there. If you're not, then Monday the 23rd is when Pio is going to become available. For anybody who is uh, watching this, I want to stress that you should get your copy of Pio through the coach that invited you to this webinar. Okay, So I know that we've kind of opened this up. I haven't kept this only for Ashley and I and for people who are following us or people who are our clients or customers or friends. Um, so there might be some people on who, here who are coming to hear what we have to say about this. Um, if, if some other coach said, hey, there's this thing on endurance training and I know you're a, a runner or whatever and said, hey, go watch that, go talk to them about how to get your copy of Pio and they'll help you out. If you don't have a coach and you just found this somehow, you know, uh, you can leave a comment on YouTube or Google or wherever you're seeing this and either Ashley or I will get in touch with you about uh, getting a copy of Pio and working with us to get in on uh, Pio and endurance training. I'm going to go, uh, Ashley, if you want to, if you have any closing comments or anything, I'm going to go over to the event pages while you do that mm -hmm. and check and see if we have any questions from anyone okay, and we'll cover those, but you can go ahead okay. and any closing sure. comments. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, mention two things. I want to make sure that we highlighted this, and I think we did a little bit, but w number one, I want to make sure that you know that the music in here is really good. It's not that um, traditional, what you would think, yoga kind of music. It's it's good. It's it's uppy. It's not you know distracting. Um, I don't know who put the stuff music together, but it, they did a really good job, and, and so it'll keep you engaged and it's positive. Uh, even the lyrics, I kind of listened to to see what they were saying, just to you know, like that kind of the sub subliminal messaging. So I wanted to let you know the music is not what you're going to expect. The other thing is that the nutrition, we haven't really spoken about that, and I'm sure if you're an athlete, that's already you've already got your nutrition plan down. But if, if you're a newer athlete and kind of wondering, well, what's the nutrition plan that comes with it? Because there is a guide that goes with it. It is great. I love it. I, I don't know if you wanted to speak to it a little bit as far as how it compares to potentially the 21-day fix, um, Ryan, but I'm going to share with you what I did. I, I like that they have it um, in... I think five or six different categories. So you have your proteins, your 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 um, primary vegetables, your secondary vegetable list lists, which are more of your starchy like um, grains, and then they also have um, your fats and uh, fats carbs. And I think that was about it. There must be another category, but I just loved it because I was able to look from the list, see what I wanted, figure out my body, you know, my, my weight. And then there's a formula that you figure it out. It tells you which category you'll be in to tell you how many from the proteins, how many from the primary vegetables, so on, so on, you'll have each day. And I really thought that was super easy. I was able to plug it into my phone and make sure that I was checking off what you know each category and how many I was having per day. The other thing that I did just to get, if you guys want to really lean out a little bit, just an insider tip, and I'm not a nutritionist, but I have studied a lot of nutrition, and I, and, I, and I work on myself with the nutrition side. But I want to tell you that I took that secondary veggie category, and I basically, uh, I was allowed to have two for my, my body weight. I took that, and I had my one rice milk, and my, as that would be one. And then my second thing that I did was I took my second portion for the day and I moved it to the primary veggie so I didn't eat any of the nuts and seeds and grains including corn that were uh, recommended in that category and I the back of my legs I'm just saying I'm in my 40s on the other side of 45 and this the what the cellulite that I had it went away and I'm sure it was a combination of the, the workout along with the nutrition Mm -hmm. That's that's an interesting thing that has come from Pio um, that I've seen with a lot of people is that cellulite and other um, let's say sagging has has uh, gone away a little bit in a way that I have not really seen from uh, other workout programs, especially high uh, impact programs and things like that. Um, I saw quite a few pictures from the test group where people had you know seen cellulite and 
uh, sagging arms and things like that just elongate basically it looked like things just got longer all of a sudden you know the skin tightened up and things like that it was it was very interesting but I also extremely highly agree with you on the nutrition plan the nutrition plans amazing and a lot of the results that you might see from us uh, that we got from just doing pio by itself was from the nutrition plan too mm. you, I, I highly recommend that you don't go out buy yourself a copy of pio and eat whatever the heck you want mm. and expect to have the same results pio is not just a workout program it's an entire fitness and nutrition solution it has the nutrition plan with it so don't ignore that part um, you know do the nutrition plan with it and for us that included Shakeology because we we always drink Shakeology I don't know about you but I've been drinking it for four years and it fits really nicely with the nutrition plan and so we all did that too yeah. but don't just go out there and just think that you're gonna do pio for 30 minutes a day and uh, eat a poor uh, mm -hmm. Diet and then expect results from. Yeah, and let me let me just say that about the Shake Allergy, and I know this isn't a call or a, a, a conference call about the about Shake Allergy, but I was introduced to Shake Allergy by one of my Ironman athletes, Frank um, friends, uh, when I was training for 2012 uh, Cozumel Ironman, mm -hmm. and I in February I started drinking it through till November. I noticed that I had. Uh, I didn't. I, I felt really good that season, and I don't know. I'm sure my nutrition was cleaner, but I was 10 years older than the last time I had done an Ironman, and I had two kids and I was married. So that a lot has changed. But I was able to podium in a half Ironman. It's called Super, Super Frog down here in California, in Coronado. Oh wow! And, That's um, quite a race too. <laughs> yeah, and through the sand, and it was like you know the Navy SEALs put that thing on. And I was drinking Shakeology. I felt really good after all of my workouts, which meant that I was able to then hit it hard the next workout. I don't know. I'm, I can't say it's the Shakeology only, but the nutrition did help me. And I don't drink it for weight loss. I drink it for the nutritional value. The other thing that I noticed was every year in the winter time, I would decrease my, my my workouts, you know, the volume of my workouts, and I would usually gain about eight pounds on average, you know, anywhere between seven to ten, even sometimes twelve, but that was rare. But ten pounds, seven to ten, and mm -hmm. that winter, the twelve, thirteen, and whatever, yeah, twelve and thirteen, the last two years, I haven't gained the weight, and. Um, I know I've minimized gluten in my diet for sure, almost eliminated it. That might be a big part of it too, but uh, my, my cravings and I just feel more, I guess, all my cells are being fueled. So I, I toss yeah. that out, try it for 30 days and see what you guys think. That's I absolutely agree with that. You know, if you guys are thinking about getting Pio, I would, I would get the challenge pack so that you can try Shakeology if you haven't. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't want to spend too much time on that because this is not really, a, like you said, mm -hmm. it's not really... That's, we're talking about endurance athletes here, but that is something that we use for sure, and the nutrition plan is super, super important. So um, I hope that was good information for you guys. I'll just say I didn't see any questions on our two event pages, the Google Plus or the Fe Facebook event pages, but I did see a couple of comments that I'm pretty, that I'm pretty excited about, so I'll share them because um, I don't know if you can see these, Ashley, but uh, Luis... Rage says, as a Pio instructor, you guys are spot on. And uh, Erica oh, yeah. Irvin says, hey, you guys, I'm a Pio instructor and really feeling what you guys are saying. You are right on. So we appreciate awesome. your comments. And uh, yeah, I mean, having Pio instructors come and say that uh, that we're that we've got it right is is cool because you guys. Yeah, because we don't know what we're doing. I've only oh. taken two Pilates classes in my whole life, and I I couldn't even do it because it was too hard. <laughs> Yeah, you guys are awesome. I went and got certified. I'm a certified PIO instructor, and let me tell you, that's not an easy class to teach. So uh, you guys are awesome. And um, let me just check this event page real quick, and it looks like we still don't have any questions on that one either. So I think, you know, we're at 50 minutes now. That's a good length. we got a lot of information out there. Nobody seems to have any questions at this point. Um, anything else from you, Ashley, or are we good? Yeah, I think, I think it's great. I, I think that y you're going to be posted a recording to those two pages so that if uh, you, want, you all that are on live want to know where to get the link, you'll be able to find it there. 
Absolutely, yes. And and in fact, the link that you went to if you're watching live on YouTube is the same YouTube link that it will be recorded at. So you already have the link in the description, but I'm going to post it again on both event pages, the YouTube link, so people can watch the recording because it's being recorded right now. You so. know what I do have? How about the pricing? Do we know for sure what the pricing is? Um, that Brian, do you know? In our I, I do know that the... Just the program by itself will be fifty nine eighty five. I think it is. It's sixty bucks, right, for just right. the program. The challenge pack normal price. That means you get Shakeology plus the workout program is going to be one sixty. But they have not officially announced that it will be one forty right when it first comes out. But I am 99.999% sure that that's what it'll be. So you'll get it most likely. Uh, no guarantees, but uh, I pretty much guarantee it. Yeah. <laughs> um, you will get uh, Shakeology plus the workout program for 140 which is basically like getting the workout program for 10 bucks. It's uh, very okay. similar. That's one way you could look at it. Uh, you could look at it whatever way you want, but um, that's one way you could look at it, and um, that's June 23rd. So, uh, you know, Monday, June 23rd, we'll be able to start ordering those challenge packs up. Great. Awesome. Thanks, Ryan, for putting this together. It's been awesome. Yeah, thank you for being on and all the, the additional information that you shared. And um, thank you, everybody, for watching, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Feel free to leave us comments or um, you know, send us emails or messages or whatever if you do have additional questions that we didn't cover. Thanks.